Imagine you took the moon's mass and you distribute it to Silicon Valley, to the major data centers of China. The servers will become a gravity well. There will be so much mass inside them that it's as if the moon is on the surface of the Earth. And, you know, I, I've discussed simulation theory in Closer Encounters and, and other books of mine before, but I discovered something recently that's much more rigorous uh, from a mathematics and physics perspective and consequently also more compelling and disturbing. And that's this. Okay, so bear with me. This gets a little bit complicated. So we start building computers in the 1940s, right? Alan mm. Turing, the yep. big wall-sized computers, and we're competing with the Nazis. Mm. And, the Maniac um, and the Iliac. Yeah, and ENIAC. Yeah. And, uh, at that time in the 1940s, when we're building the first computers, there was this guy, Claude Shannon, who developed a science known as information theory, subsequently came to be known as information theory. Because before computers were built, nobody thought of mathematically formalizing the transfer of information. We had phones at that time, we had radio transmissions, but nobody thought about what was being transmitted over phone lines or over telegraph lines as data transfer. That concept didn't exist. But once they started building computers, it stands to reason that somebody would mathematically formulize what data is and what it means to transmit and transfer data. Mm -hmm. So this guy, Claude Shannon, does this. And he comes up with the idea of a binary digit, binary digit bit, where data is conceived of according to the binary of one and zero. Uh, you know, data as being a construct built from out of sequences of ones and zeros. Claude Shannon is the first person to conceptualize this. And Shannon also makes the point that, look, we live in a universe bound by the two laws of thermodynamics. The first law of thermodynamics is that energy can never be created or destroyed. Energy E equals MC squared. This is going to be important for okay. what I'm about to say. So as, as Einstein you know, showed us, energy and mass are interconvertible. E equals MC squared. So energy can become mass and mass can become energy. Right. But we, we can't identify anywhere in the physical universe energy being created or destroyed. That's the first law of thermodynamics. Okay. Net total energy remains the same. Yep. Okay. So then the second law of thermodynamics is that we notice everywhere in nature, even, you know, like when you, you pour like a dye into a, a glass of water, that there's a tendency toward disorder mm. in the cosmos over time. And so the second law of thermodynamics is that in a closed system, uh, the level of disorder or entropy either remains constant or increases. It's never the case that entropy decreases in nature. You never have uh, more order emerge over time in large-scale physical processes. As things age. As things age, right. more disorder. Yes, this happens correct. to our bodies. It happens to the whole universe. Okay. And so this is where they postulate the so-called heat depth of the universe, that at a certain point, the entropy will become so great that first, you know, galaxies are pulled apart, then solar systems are pulled mm. apart, then planets are pulled apart, and eventually atomic structures are pulled apart. Mm. And life becomes non-viable in the universe. Heat death of the universe, and victory of entropy. That's the second law of thermodynamics. So Shannon says, look, if bits, binary digits, meaning information, is flowing through a computer system. That computer system is in the physical world, meaning it's bound by the laws of entropy, meaning it's bound by the laws of entropy, okay? So then there's this German Jewish physicist, Rolf Landauer. He came over with the other German Jews who were fleeing the Nazis. And in 1961, Rolf Landauer builds upon Claude Shannon's uh, groundwork in information theory. And he comes up with this equation, which I have in Satanian. He comes up with this very short, elegant equation, uh, extrapolated from out of the second law of thermodynamics, which says that if you delete one bit of information, there should be an increase of entropy outside of a computer system. So think about it this way. 
on a microchip or a magnetic tape, when it's blank, when it's blank, mm. you've got the equivalent of zero, 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 or one, 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 one. There's no data. Right. When you record data on it, you get zero, one, zero, zero, one, 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 zero, one. So actually, the blank tape has more order than when you start encoding information on it when conceived in physical terms. So because information is meaningful to us and like a file has a book on it, text on it, and the text has meaning to us, or a photographic image has a meaning content to us, we think of information as, let's say, decreasing entropy because it's, we think of it as highly ordered because it's meaningful to us. But when you think of it as a bunch of ones and zeros, sequences of ones and zeros, when you think of it inside of a physical system, the blank magnetic tape or the blank microchip has more order in it than when you start to record ones and zeros on it. Right. That's more chaotic. Yes. Zero, zero, one, 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 zero, zero. So Rolf Landauer was saying, if we erase the data, we're increasing, uh, I'm sorry, if we erase the data, we're decreasing entropy. entropy inside the computer. Now, according to the laws of thermodynamics, if you decrease entropy inside, somewhere inside a closed system, meaning the universe, you have to pay for it with an increase of entropy outside the, the, outside the computer. So you're decreasing entropy inside the computer. By deleting shit. By deleting shit. Okay. That's got to result in more entropy outside the computer. Okay. Because the net energy has to remain the same. Okay. So he came up with an equation that expresses this, where if you delete one bit of information, a certain amount of energy is released. Got it. Okay, now here's where it's going to get weird and creepy. Okay, but that was all necessary background. So we we think that information is this abstract thing. We think we think it's like not physical, mm. right? That it's in the realm of ideas. Yeah. But what this equation is saying is the following: that if you amass enough data like on these huge server farms that we have in Silicon Valley, that we have in China, right? Yeah. And you're amassing not bytes or megabytes, not terabytes, petabytes, whatever, right? Of data, and you erase all that data, you're gonna have to give off a shit ton of energy. That's what Landauer's equation is saying, hmm. is that if you erase a large amount of data, terabytes of data, there's a significant measurable energy release that's gonna take place. Now, according to E equals MC squared, right? The interconvertibility of matter and energy, yeah. what does that mean, conversely? It means that if energy comes out of the computer when the data is released, terabytes and terabytes on some server, right? Yeah. What was it when it was inside the computer? Mass. It was mass. So, it's been proposed that we could weigh a hard drive before data is encoded on it, yeah. and then again after data is encoded on it, or take a hard drive that has data encoded on it, weigh it, erase the data, and then weigh it again. Right. There will be a mass differential. Okay. So there's mass inside a computer that's not anything to do with the microchips or the transistors or magnetic tapes or anything. It's a hidden mass. This has been done, this weighing? No, here's why. Because currently, according to Landauer's equation, if you were to calculate the mass of all of the information in the world today, on all of the largest server farms right. that we have in here and you know that AI is being run off of in China, mm -hmm. the total mass, according to that equation, comes to one kilogram, less than, less than one kilogram less than one kilogram. Meaning that we don't have sensitive enough weighing equipment to weigh a hard drive, let alone even a server, right? I mean, we couldn't even weigh a server, let alone a hard drive, because the mass currently is too little. However, the rate of data increase per year, the, the rate at which we're accumulating information per year is approximately 25%, okay? And if you think about where we're going technologically, we're headed toward this technological singularity where we're gonna have artificial intelligence, artificial intelligence inside of robots like the Tesla robots, yeah. 
we're going to have these systems constantly accumulating all kinds of data, right? And so it stands to reason that as we approach the technological singularity, the rate of data increase per year is going to uh, it's going to exponentially take off way beyond 25%, maybe close to 100%. Okay. But get this, even if it were to stay 25%, which it won't, but even if it were, I did the calculations. They're in my book, Satanion. In something like 340 years, the amount of information that will exist in the world at mm -hmm. current rate of data production mm -hmm. will equal the mass of the moon. Now, go back to our conversation about the moon. The moon was brought here to terraform the planet, potentially. In other words, the moon has massive gravitational effects on the Earth. Yes. Massive. It, it took us from having eight-hour days to having 24-hour days. It controls the ocean tides. Yeah. It's responsible for the tilt of the Earth's axis. The moon has tremendous gravitational pull on the Earth, and the moon only weighs 1.23% of the mass of the Earth. It weighs only, which by and, the way- And what's the size? What's the size comparison from the moon to the Earth? I, I don't have the number. Can you find it, Steve? Yeah. yeah. <clears throat> so 1.23% yeah, 1. mass. mass of the earth. Okay. So, so get this, I did the calculations and something like, I think it was like 340 years from now, something like that. We're going to wind up with a, a, a mass equivalent. The moon is one quarter the size of the earth in diameter. Yeah. So isn't that weird also, by the way, that Find it's- Find the mass. See if, see if, see if chat GPT will give you the mass. Or no, whatever you need, it is. you would need to, the ma the percentage of the mass of the earth. Oh yeah, right, right. The moon yeah. is approximately 27% the size of the earth in diameter yeah, one volume. 1.23. It has actually, a volume of about 2%, yeah, right? 1.2. Wow. is the specific number. Anyway, so listen, I did these calculations, Danny. And- so it says to illustrate if the earth uh, were hollow, it would take 15 minutes to fill it, but it's one, it's, it's less than 2% of volume. Yeah, which by the way, doesn't make sense in and of itself. In terms of, you know- The moon would have to be hollow. There you go. Anyway, I did these calculations. Yes. Something like 340 years from now. Okay. There's gonna be a moon's worth of mass in the data centers on so the, the Earth. So the Earth is gonna weigh about a moon more than it weighs now. It'll start to tear apart the planet. How? Imagine if you were to take the moon. Look, the moon is at a certain distance from us, right? It's yeah. pretty far. Yeah. And from that distance, it's having this massive gravitational effect on us. Uh -huh. Imagine you took the moon's mass and you distribute it to Silicon Valley, to the major data centers of China. You put that mass right on the surface of the Earth. It will start generating tidal forces toward that gravity well. Uh. It will start attracting objects toward the gravity well. Okay, I, I realize it sounds bizarre, but metal chairs and knives and forks will start to go toward servers. The servers will become a gravity well. There will be so much mass inside them that it's as if the moon is on the surface of the earth. It gets worse. So all the data on Earth right now, if right. you could combine all of Less than all one it, kilogram. Less than a kilogram. But because the exponential rate of data increase is so high, right. 25% per year in right 300 now. 300-something years. In 300-something years, we're going to wind up with a moon's mass worth of data on the Earth. And what's worse is that like 20 years after that, I think it was 20 years exactly after that, mm -hmm. we wind up with an Earth's worth of mass on the Earth. It will go from weighing equal, equal to the moon to weighing equal to the Earth itself, which means at that point, the planet will be completely torn apart. Unless we can find another way to store data. Or, yes. Like off the Earth, maybe. Sh or sh Sure, sure. Or in con maybe we like tap into, you know, some sort of consciousness and we store everything there. You could build super massive structures out of like nanomaterials and whatever potentially to do something like this. Yeah. But here's where I want to go somewhere else with this. Where I want to go with this is in simulation theory, right? So... So think a little bit about this, like all right, you accumulate this much data and this is what it would do to the earth, right? And um, you, uh, so you, if you weigh a hard drive before you record data on it, it weighs less than after you record data on it. Okay. But we can't see this mass. I mean, you, you open up, suppose you're one of these very technically adept computer geeks. 
and you take the uh, you know you take the screwdriver to your computer opener. Where the fuck is the mass? You can't see it. Right. Even in these giant servers, 340 years from now, once there's a moon's worth of mass in terms of information on the Earth, right. you can't see it inside the servers. Is there any other example of mass that we can't see in the universe? Yeah, it's called dark, dark, dark matter. matter. <laughs> 